Uh, Ronnie was all over my message this morning, and uh, I thought he he was going to share with you what I need to share with you, but uh, he didn't uh, get it all out, and uh, I'll finish it up tonight. So since he shared with you the most of it, I won't have to share with you and keep you as long. But uh, well, I thought it was a curse when the Lord called me to preach. And I run so long as I've told you many, many times, but I tell you it's an honor to preach His Word. And it's an honor to stand here. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22. I want you to pay close attention. As far as I know, uh, if I was to share something with a, a young preacher or, or give them uh, counsel, I would tell them to write down every message that they was privileged to preach, every funeral and every wedding. Uh, some of the weddings I'd like to forget. I feel like I wasted my time. But anyways, uh, funerals are longer lasting. Funerals are longer lasting. I've not had one to fail yet. So, uh, anyways, we. Uh, it's a privilege to be here and, and, and to preach. I, I don't take it lightly, and I don't want you, uh, you young people, I don't know how you feel about me. I do know one thing, and I hope your life is better than mine was. But growing up and being a teenager, I've sat under some of the most boring preachers ever was. And I've sat under some good ones. But some of them, I thought that, uh, Lord, uh, our sermon was four hours. I just about soon listen to Miss uh, the Beast te teach English or Miss Arbol teach math than to sit under some preaching. And you you don't know Miss the Beast and Miss Arbol, they done went on. But uh, I wasn't their favorite, and neither was they mine. <laughs> but I thank God that he's my favorite. I hope that I preach to where the young people get something out of it. I believe a lot of the downfall with our world today and and uh, with mankind is the teaching uh, that they are not getting. Uh, I, I, I worry sometimes that we want to give our children more than we had, and we ought to apply that to good teaching and good examples. And I believe we fail in that respect. Something that I don't hear, uh, that I, I, my grandfather, my mother's dad, was very, very superstitious. If he went, never had his driver's license, he always rode to work. I can barely remember him working, uh, but when he he uh, always rode with a buddy. But uh, he would, uh, my mother would tell me, if he would leave the house, get out in the yard, and realize that he had forgot something, no way would he turn around and go back in the house to get it. He'd stand up there and squall. If he had to squall an hour for <laughs> folks to bring. Uh, whatever it was uh, out there to him. He would not go back in the house. He considered it poison. You may not have ever heard this. He, he considered it bad luck and poisonous. If you eat fish, don't drink milk. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that one or not. And, and, and I've heard one and, 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 and many Many folks say, I've even heard if you cut your fingernails on Sunday that it was bad luck. It preached to the kids all the time. But there was something that I hadn't heard in years, and it went through my mind this week. Uh, and let me read the scripture first. Verse 22, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Now I want you to pay close attention to these words. Said, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, and Raka meaning there a vain fellow, but uh, said, say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But here's one that we heard as growing up, and I don't know about the rest of you. It was not to be used at the herald house. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. We was a growing up, boy, I tell you what, we mommy would cast judgment on us right then. 
If it was to slip out of our mouth and we was to call somebody a fool, uh, boy, I tell you what, you're in danger, danger of hell's fire. Now, as I go through the Bible, now you can turn over to Luke chapter 12 and you'll see uh, what Ronnie was doing this morning. But as uh, we was growing up and, and, and uh, we was taught to fear the Word of God, and the Bible said there in 5 and 22, and said that whosoever shall call his brother or anybody a fool shall be in danger of hell's fire. Now studying the Bible, I don't know how many times that I've read the Bible. I never kept track of that either. But if you'll study the Bible and look through the Bible, I've done some research only one time in the Bible of all the times that mankind angered God, God never refer, or, or, or referred to man as a fool but one time. Now listen to me. I looked up fool in the dictionary and you say, I know the definition. I did too. But I paid close attention. The Webster said that a fool is a silly person. Webster said that a fool, now this has happened many, many times. Back in, 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 in uh, older times and in former times, back when they didn't have a lot of entertainment, and we have enjoyed the entertainment of fools. Uh, we was taught not to laugh at retarded people, and we was, laugh, uh, we was taught not to make fun. My dad would take off his shoe and show us many a times, Listen to me, kids. Uh, Dad uh, said that when he was a young boy, there was an old lady that was in their community up in Roan County and said she limped real bad. And uh, Dad said one day he was uh, out with some boys and, and uh, he began to uh, mock this old lady and walk like she did. And you know what? It wasn't just a matter of time, just a matter of a few days that my dad stepped on a rusty nail, went through his shoe, and penetrated his foot. He got blood poisoning, and, and dad had to wear a buildup in his shoe. But without that buildup, Ronnie, daddy walked just like that old lady. Listen to me. God keeps a record of everything, and we need to be careful. And we need to instruct our children on how they listen. We ought to abide by the word of God. But there's a moral side to people that people don't care enough about their children, about the ones around them, to teach them about the Bible and about the things, the instructions of the Bible. And even so more, they don't even teach their children good morals. Yes, sir. But I tell you what, there was a time when we was growing up that one of the greatest commandments of our household was to respect our elders. Yes, sir. If we was having dinner at Mama's, listen, we didn't grab a plate before the elders. If we went to church and we eat, we didn't jump in front of the elders. The elders we respected. And the Word of God said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord that the Thy days may be long upon the earth. We was instructed and it was, it was put into us and we feared the word of God. Listen to me, folks, don't fear the word of God like they used to. But back in olden times, you could study the books in our public schools. Back the kings and noblemen, they would look through their community or through their towns and they would pick out silly people and they called them fools back then. Didn't have a lot of entertainment, Lee. Didn't have a, a, the web and didn't have a lot of music or musicians. And for a form of entertainment, yeah. some would do it every day in a certain hour. They would call for the full body of the kingdom or the community to be brought before them. And they would just uh, gather around and they yeah. would pick it person they would call the fool of the kingdom or the fool of the town and they would make fun and they would laugh themselves silly yeah. on the stupid things that the fool done. Listen, a fool was paid to be a fool and he wasn't doing it out of acting but he, he was acting his 
normal self. Webster said a fool is a silly person as a clown. Uh, listen to me, Webster said a fool was a victim of trickery. Webster said that, uh, that a, 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 a fool was a, a, a victim of a joke and said the fool was a victim of trick or a fool was deceived. Listen yeah. to me. Well. Only a few times in the Bible the word fool is used and God has been angered at mankind since Adam and Eve. Listen to me. But only one time, yeah. listen, that did he call a man a fool. Now listen. Man has done all manner of evil, Zach, since the beginning of time. Adam and Eve started uh, by not obeying the Word of God. God gave them careful instructions of what to do and one thing not to do. But listen to me. Even then did God not call man nor woman a fool. And now listen. Psalm said in 14, 1 and 53 and 1, said a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Listen to me. You can find that for yourself. And we'll say a man's a fool for doing this or doing that. The Bible said, as I read to you in Matthew 5, 22, a fool has said, and listen, we're in danger of hell's fire if we call our brother a fool. But as I said, the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 14, verse 1, in chapter 53, verse 1, said a man is a fool when he says in his heart, there is no God. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. When folks say I don't believe, they're putting themselves in a classification as being a fool. And I read to you, Webster said that a fool is a man or a woman that has been deceived. And the only one that can deceive us from believing that there is a God is the devil. And we become a fool in the eyes of God. Be slow there. You said you was going to hurry. You pray and I will. But I'm going to give you the whole dose. Praise the Lord. Pray. Mommy, give us cancer or paragoric. She would open our mouth and make sure we swallowed it so we wouldn't run out back and spit it out. I'm going to open your mouth tonight and make sure you swallowed it so you won't run outside and spit it out. We need careful instructions and our instructions come from the Word of God. We've got people going to hell tonight and they don't even know it. Praise the Lord. That is good preaching. Come on. Luke chapter 12. I'm going to listen. Ronnie went over this this morning. He spake. Bible talking about Jesus. Said he spake a parable unto them saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. He thought within himself saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He said, this will I do. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build greater. And there will I bestow all of my fruits and my goods. Yeah. Let's stop here for just a minute. Yeah. What was this rich man, this blessed man saying right there? He said, I don't want for anything. Right. Listen to me. I don't want for anything. I've got enough to do me today. I've got enough to do me tomorrow. And the barns that he had built in the beginning was enough to do it. Yes, sir. They had built those barns. Now listen to me. They would build those barns and they still do it today. Farming just about out. But Jack, I'll teach you a little bit. If you ain't learned this in school, back when farmers would begin to, uh, they would buy, purchase land and they would purchase an acreage and they, they would analyze the size of their family and, yeah. and it, they would take a look at their family and then they'd say now, say for instance and God has blessed me, I wouldn't take a farm in Georgia for you and Jenna and, uh, and, he, and Whitney too, I wouldn't but thank God I just got two I couldn't have kept up with any more I couldn't have, y'all might have mom and dad done it, I don't know 
But I'll tell you what, we've had our hands full. But anyway, if I'd have bought me a piece of ground, I'd have analyzed how much acreage I needed for my cattle, how big of a place I needed for my pigs and for my chickens. I've never been an animal lover either. That's another thing besides your good looks you got from your daddy. But anyway, I would analyze how much space I I needed for the animals, sorry for spitting on you, but anyway, then after that, I would analyze, listen, how much hay I needed to grow in order to supply the needs of the animals. After I decided how much land I needed for the hay to feed to the animals, listen, I would start looking at how much land I need for the corn to go with the hay. This sounds a little bit about the house, it's a little bit like the house that Jack built. But I'd analyze how much room and how much land I would need to plant the corn to go with the hay to feed the cows and feed the rest of the animals. I would have that much acreage and then I would look at how much land I would need to raise a garden, therefore to supply the needs of my family. Now, after I would look at that and then I would suppose if God was to bless me with grandchildren, I would look way down the road. Listen to me. This is good preaching. Uh, Don't that sound like somebody else we read about? Boys, God didn't look at today, but He looked way down the road and seen that He would make a way, Leah, forever and forever till time was no more. Yeah, you're right. Have the land for the for, for, for the animals and had the land for the provisions for the animals uh, then they would have the land for the for the family and the needs of the family. Now listen to me. After they uh, analyzed and set apart, they would stake out uh, on the east side and the west side and the north side and the south side. Uh, after they analyzed uh, their plan and their future, they would begin, Ronnie, what? Uh, to build a barn. Yes, sir. Uh, what was the barn for? Oh. To house a provision. Oh. Blessed be the yeah. name, Lord. Uh, that sounds like the church, don't it? Uh, Boy, I'll tell you what, you know what, never ever, if you look down through, I heard somebody say, a barn might have burned down, a barn might have got blown down, or rotted away, but nine out of ten barns that was built by a good man, using a good hand, was a good size, praise the Lord forever, but this man was blessed abundantly, he had more than enough, he had enough to share, Zach. he said I'll tear down my barns and feel greater, but that angered God, it sure did, that upset God, never before had he spoke to man like he spoke of this man. Come on, Rick. A fool is a silly person. A fool is a person that in early days was kept by kings and noblemen for entertainment. A fool was a victim of trickery. A fool was a, a, a somebody, the victim of a joke. A, a, a fool is somebody that has been tricked or deceived. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You remember what the Word of God said? Your adversary, the devil, is going to and fro seeking whom he may devour. It's not only in California, it's not only in Florida, it's not only in Charleston, but it's in Rumble, West Virginia. Folks is being deceived by the adversary. That's telling them, as Riley said, the big thing, just wait, just put it off. But Jesus is coming back. Come on, Richard. I use a lot of stories. And I use a lot of... Uh, uh, let me think of it a minute. Uh, well, I won't think of it. Uh, illustrations. illustrations. That's what I was looking for. I use a lot of illustrations to tell stories that uh, Jesus done it. He spoke in parables. And one of the first illustrations that I used when I first started preaching, I heard a preacher share, and I've, God's blessed me with illustrations that bless me 
But I heard a preacher use this, and, and I started using it as a young preacher. And my daddy, he, first time he heard me use it, giving an invitation, he come to me and he said, Son, I really like that. And he said, I'm going to use that. But it was a story told. It, it wasn't a true story, but somebody had a thought. But it's a real good thought. Said the devil one time was having a meeting with all of his angels. You think the devil don't plan how he's going to tear people yes, down? You think the devil don't plan on how that he destroys people? He sure does. Yes, yes. But said the devil was having a meeting with his angels one time. You mean the devil's got angels? He sure does. Yes, yes. yes sir. And the Bible said that his angels transformed themselves as angels of light that folks would be deceived by me. But said the angels and his his uh, the devil and his angels was having a meeting one time. How they was going to deceive mankind upon the face of the Whoa. earth. Said they stood and the devil looked at all of his angels and all of his helpers round about. He said, I need some ideas how we're going to deceive mankind. Whoa. One of his angels stood up and said, Sir, I've got a good I've got a good idea on how that we'll go and we'll deceive men, women, boys, and girls upon the face of the earth. He said, how would that be? He said, we'll go all over the face of the earth. And he said, we'll tell them that there's no God. And said, we'll deceive them with that. He sat down and the devil looked at him and he said, we might use that son. He said, but that's not good enough. He said, the power of God is so strong. Yes. You think that the devil, you said now preacher the devil, oh yes. Oh, yeah. The Bible said I'm back that enough. Said the devil even trembled. Yeah. Oh bless the Lord. Yeah. Even trembled at the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And boys when the oh. name of Jesus don't affect our people, yeah. man yeah. they're worse yeah. off than the devil. Yeah. If the devil trembles at his name. Amen. Yes. So in a little while Another devil stood up and he said, Listen, I know what we'll do. We'll go all over the face of the earth telling men, women, boys, and girls that there ain't no hell. The devil looked at him and he said, We might use that son, but that's not good enough. The power of God is so strong, he'll speak to hearts and everybody won't fall for that, that there's no hell. We've got to have a better idea. Yeah. Moments went by, and minutes went by, and a good it seemed like forever passed. Then one of these angels stood up and said, We'll go up on the face of the earth telling men, women, boys, and girls that they've got plenty of time. Yeah. The devil said, Perfect idea. Yeah, yeah. That's what we'll use yeah. for. We use anything else. Yeah. And boys, ain't that the truth? Yeah. Folks yeah. are saying, I even thought, I had plenty of time. But to listen, Jesus, God Almighty spoke to this man that thought that he had more than enough yes. and he didn't need nothing. Yes. God called him a fool. Yes. The Bible said here, boy, it's a good preaching, ain't it? Come on, I'm enjoying Boy, this. I like Praise it. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that this man said, this will I do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater. There will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say, listen, Here's where he got in trouble. Ronnie touched this on this this morning. Y'all can cut in any time you want to. I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Oh, listen. Right here's a bad ingredient. Yeah, what's he saying? Quit working. Yeah, slow down a little bit. He said, Thou hast many goods laid up in store. He said... Take, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Boy, ain't that what people stole today? He's to eat, drink, and be merry. Take it easy. I believe that. Who was that said that? Take it easy. It, was, it, it may have been that guy that done the rattlesnake song, but anyway, uh, hey, he said, I'll take it easy. I'll eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, listen to me. God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou what hast provided? You're just going to make it easy on somebody else. But thou fool, thou hast been 
the seed. Man, you've been tricked. You've been a victim of a joke. Listen to me. Boys, your soul's going to be required of you. You build up and you laid up treasures in the wrong barn. Yes, sir. You put them in a barn where a windstorm or a tornado can come. Listen, tear down that barn. You put them in a barn where a wildfire can break out and it can be burned up. Listen to me. Somebody can take it away from you. But the best thing for you to do is to lay up your treasures in the storehouse in heaven where neither moth or rust or fire doth corrupt. Bless the people. Adam being the first there that had disobeyed God. God looked at him and you know what he said? He didn't say Adam, but he said Adam. He didn't say thou fool. But he said, Adam, where art thou? Yes, sir. What? God was looking for him. And God wanted to reason with him. And God wanted to work things out. When he told Jonah to go to Nineveh, he didn't say, listen, Jonah, thou fool. But the Bible said that God, listen, provided a great fish down to go pick up the preacher and to spare him. When Peter denied him the third time and the cop crew, God didn't say, nor neither did Jesus, thou fool, you denied the Son of Man three times. But he, Jesus stood there and shook his head when Judas had sold him for 30 pieces of silver. God didn't call him a fool, but he called him a friend. When did God call somebody that was a, a fool was when somebody said, I've done it all on my own, and I've acquired all this on my own, and I don't have need for nothing else. God, Jesus said, Thou fool, listen to me. When somebody don't see the need of a Savior and think that you're doing all right without him, that's when God said, Man becomes a fool, and that's my message. Father, we come before you tonight and we praise you for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, that our eyes is open. I will look around the building tonight, probably the youngest children that I've heard and looked. And I remember even when our kids, and I know technology and, and learning has really increased even since then. But even when our children was in school, and I would begin to try to help them with their homework. I would be overwhelmed and I couldn't believe it being in grade school. And the things that they was being taught that I didn't even learn by finishing senior high school. Lord, it, it, it just overwhelmed me. And we would probably take the youngest of, 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 of children, of, of, of young adults in this building tonight. And, I would probably be the, I would finish least if we was to take an aptitude test. Probably would. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm a thankful Lord that somebody cared enough about me to preach me the word and to tell me that I needed Jesus more than anything else in the world. I needed Him, listen, more than houses, more than land, more than silver, than in gold. Listen, somebody taught me that a fool is born when a man says that I don't need Jesus in my life and I've got all the material things in this world that's enough for me. I was taught that that's when man becomes a fool. Oh, blessed be the name, Lord. I'm glad that heaven came down, the Holy Ghost came with it, and pricked my lost soul's heart, and I see myself in need of a Savior, and I call out to you, and you save my soul, and you bless me wonderfully. Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you would spread the word to folks, Lord. Up and down this creek, Lord, there's folks that don't have no need of a Savior. Don't see theirself in need. They think that they got money in the bank, food in the cabinets. Everything's just fine. Oh, Lord, have mercy. There's an hour coming. And they'll realize, Lord, they've been a fool. They've been deceived. They've been a victim of a trick. 
they put off and denied the most important thing in man's life is a Savior. I pray tonight, Lord, that you would help us. Take this. We would take it and allow it to burn our heart. Lord, we can't afford to become a fool. We can't allow people around us in our families and in our neighborhood and in our church to become us fools. Lord, when you spake in this parable, it angered you, Lord, of all the wrong that you'd seen mankind do. It angered you. And even in your own teaching, Lord, you instructed us to call no man a fool. If we was to call someone a fool, we would be in danger of a hell's fire. And oh God, you used this word through your own lips. When a man thought that material things was enough to do him, he called him a fool. And your word teaches us for us, and you instructed us to seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And these other things shall be added unto us. So, Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us to receive your word. A chance somebody tonight is decided in their heart and life they're in need of the Savior they're in need of the Lord more than anything I pray that you would give them the courage to slip out of the seat come down to an altar of prayer and say Lord I have everything but still I don't have enough I need you in my heart in my life. It's in your name we pray, Lord. Now, Lord, we're given an invitation. I've spoke everything that's on my mind and on my heart. We need you to take over, Lord. Take full control. I ask you to speak, Lord, as the church is being so respectful to thy spirit. Everybody's being so quiet, and I appreciate that. Walk up and down the aisles tonight. Visit every pew. Visit every person. Heavenly Father, help us not to be fools. Help us, Lord, not to put the most importance on things of this world. But our number one important thing would be salvation for our soul. We love you, Lord, and we appreciate you. Move as only you can. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Will we sing a song? I want to clarify something. This, this might happen, but it don't happen with me. If we have to wait till we get to heaven. I don't care, and it don't matter. It's none of my business how other preachers get their messages. I'll just tell you how I get mine. By praying. By reading the Word. Yes. What I give you tonight and what I give you in nights before. Come on. I don't wait till I get to church and look around and see who's here and get my message. I'll give you my notes that I jotted down this week. Yeah. Before I came to church tonight, I had no idea who was going to be here. I had no idea who was going to hear me. Come on. I know folks watch this is over the YouTube and over the ministry. As I told you before, we're getting views from people. And I don't recognize them enough, but we got folks even in other countries watching us faithfully and listening to my preaching, our singing. I don't know who's watching, but I know one thing. 
this message is for somebody. Yes. And it's for all, all of us here tonight. Lord, amen. Yes. So before you say, Richard's picking on me, I'll be more than glad to give you these thoughts that I made put into these notes that's got the outline of what I preached tonight. Amen. I didn't wait till I got here to see who was here to throw gospel rocks at. But I give you what God gave me this week. Him knowing who needed to hear Lord. what was to be preached tonight. I don't know how anybody else does it, but that's how I do it. If I got up here and preached, you wouldn't enjoy it. But when the Holy Ghost anoints us to preach, I even enjoy my own preaching because it blesses me. So if the devil said, Richard, just throwing that at you, you better quit listening to him. I preach what God gave me. And we'll be held accountable of what the Lord sends our way. Yes, amen. I'd rather sing it to me.